greatest uh, effective uh, action you can take is when the mind becomes insignificant for you. I'm talking about the psychological antics of the mind, and something recognized and turn away from it, because you starve it of the oxygen that gives it power. There's a saying that the life, the um, like, the person is there, mm-hmm. and it's all fine. Mm-hmm. It, my attention more and more is not going there. It, yeah. It's not. It's there, but it's not important. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, the the daily life of um, this one in the life who's a wife and has all these different roles to play uh, in a job. Um, uh, That's that's seen clearly now that that's just what it is. It's just the dynamic consciousness there that... And I'm aware of all of this play going on, but I'm not concerned so much with that. I'm just seeing it. Yeah, this is true. So I, I... This is true. This is also a very natural thing, actually. Simple also. That it comes by itself. You are coming to see that, wait, uh, as soon as waking up happens, then it seems the world appears again, and uh, is peopled with so many beings, and the sense of I arises back in this body, and the relationship of this I with the world at large, and so on, is also functioning on some level, and that is taking place in front of something that has no name, isn't it? So the entire waking state consciousness and its functioning is happening by itself, actually. The experiencer, that which is being experienced, and uh, the movement or the functioning of experiencing, are all the play and the content of that waking consciousness, of that dynamic consciousness that you are speaking. It is simply happening, including the sense of this intimate identity, of a sense of me moving in this world, as a character who is playing presently a husband or a wife or this or that, an uncle and this and all of this is kind of going on. Something is quite apart from this, but it does not dismiss this role. It is not cynical about it. It knows it has to play that part also. You follow? That that part is also being played. But the cynicism is not there that, oh, it's rubbish, it doesn't really. No, no. It is also consciousness acting. But beyond this active consciousness, there is also a space of seeing, where it is as though one is looking out from this vastness and observing the functioning of consciousness, operating inside this form, doing its thing. And it may sound strange, but as you acclimatize yourself to it, and by that I simply mean that you become comfortable with this seeing. Because the mind is going to try and tell, look, look, something is very strange, this should not be, you know, you see? Uh, but something is feeling, no, no, no. No, no, it's going by itself. And also the way of seeing it becomes more perfected. There is a saying, I'm not seeing the world as it truly is. I am seeing the world as I am. So if I am very stressed being, the world will come across a very stressed place. You see? But as one is seeing more and more from this integral consciousness, from this uh, place of being, then one sees that, wait, you know, your eyes are seeing it more true. And you see that bitter or sweet, each of these expressions have to happen. But you are not so invested in them, because you know that uh, somehow some power is taking care of this. And yet, if you turn your attention to any particular aspect of it, that also has an impact. You see? And the more pure the consciousness is, meaning that it is filtered out the egoic conditioned uh, self, 
the more effective the, the attention energizes what it's looking at. These are things that are part of our mystical existence. But in our mental world, we have tried to explain things in some scientific way, which is not how they really are, but how they can appear to be. If you are fully invested in your outlook, then you will believe that outlook into existence and experience what you project. There is no, there is not one thing in life that has one single inherent meaning. It has the meaning that you project onto it. It becomes what you take it to be. We must understand that. And gradually you are, come, you are seeing that the consciousness is adapting itself to take on the colour or the size and shape of whatever, con- whatever concepts it embraces or it feels inclined to give attention to it. But you are looking now from beyond this field of operation and you are not invested in trying to change things deeply, seeing that they are going fine by themselves, bitter or sweet, because the bitter has its role to play. And sometimes a much more effective and auspicious role than the sweet thing. You can only bless it. But your place of looking, you have moved beyond more and more from the grip of phenomenality, you are looking out from another place. And um, it all happens just very naturally. It yes. very almost, um, you just slide into it. Um, Why it happens naturally? <laughs> Because it is natural. That's why it happened naturally. You see? You also just somehow in your life you're you're being aligned with that universal principle. And then you see somehow everything drops into place. And everything seems to like without setting any program, it's all just unfolded naturally for you. Um, I th- also, when uh, these insights come, or this insight came, it was it was like um, a confirming over and over again that that um, it's, that is that that's so. But that that felt like sometimes it felt like it was maybe the mind that was trying to confirm. You see, the mind tries to claim this. Because if it can get in and assign the, put the signature on, it can claim it as, you know, well, we did really well here. You see? But then that is even seen out of your own, the sharpness of your own Dharma eye. You are seeing this thing. And what did you do? You chose to disregard him, which he doesn't like. Hmm? Because the greatest uh, effective. Uh, action you can take is when the mind becomes insignificant for you. I'm talking about the psychological antics of the mind, and something recognized and turn away from it, because you starve it of the oxygen that gives it power. You see, just like that. Let go. Relax. Oh. Beyond this active consciousness. There is also a space of seeing, where it is as though one is looking out from this vastness and observing the functioning of consciousness, operating inside this form, doing its thing. You have moved beyond more and more from the grip of phenomenality. You are looking out from another place. 